there there's this verse that talks about how we are if if you are a follower of Jesus then you are in essence one of his ambassadors mm -hmm. and the whole objective of an ambassador of who's a follower of Jesus is actually to reconcile human beings reconcile human <laughs> beings yeah wow. so so and, and it and then it says it says this, we have the service of reconciliation mm. and it blows me away that if that's one of the traits of a supposedly Jesus following Christian person uh -huh. I always add like where where are they where's that trait how come we don't see that <laughs> welcome to well metaverse the podcast where Jason Earls and Aaron Sorrels navigate the explosive growth in the metaverse Buckle up, because we are in for a heck of a ride. Another episode of, what's the name of this thing again? <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, the Well Metaverse Podcast, that's it. Yeah. Boy, that was... Uh, that was a throwback that doo, 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 like I, I feel like that might might be Mr. Rogers. Like that's hysterical, dude. That's a, uh, King Daniel. That's funny. Yeah, there it is. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. Oh man. How are you doing, my friend? Dude, I'm doing great, dude. I know you do you are busy with the soapstone stuff. Today's big day. <laughs> yeah, huge. Yeah, I um Terry and I we just landed this morning from uh we went to miami for a wedding so miami uh, yeah pretty cool man cool. so it's it, it's and cool it, it's kind of it's kind of tell you why we went it's kind of it's just like like what we're seeing with soapstone it's you help out in a process you know sit with someone and then you see them launch or this what you've helped them strategize become a reality mm. So my wife and I got a phone call from from a very close family friend who lives in Los Angeles <laughs> and does a lot of stuff uh, that that most of us consume of. Like for instance, uh, this friend helped choreograph part of the Super Bowl halftime show. Really? Yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> wow. And so this friend called us and said, hey, man, my cousin, who's also in this industry and his fiance, who's in this industry, they probably they probably could use y'all's help. And because most people don't know. I don't even know if you know this, <laughs> but my wife and I have developed this this marriage uh, enhancement programs. All right. All right. So. So one is we wrote we wrote a, a a workbook and actually teach it cross country called uh, Marriage DNA, uh -huh. where we help couples discover their uniqueness as as a couple and help them learn, you know, how their marriage can impact their their marriage in a sense is a, a vessel of leadership that helps other people become better human beings. Wow. Okay. And uh, so we walk them through that. And then we have another one called Vow to Laugh. That's why I do stand-up comedy. We have a DJ. I do stand-up comedy. And then my wife and I come on stage. And we have a very funny but real uh, marriage conversation. We let people into our world about, you know, what we struggle with, what, what's help, what helps us. Wow. And the nice. commonalities. Yeah. Nice. So, and then there, there are times when we do couples premarital counseling, which is why our family friend called. It's like, hey, I think y'all can help this couple. So we did their premarital counseling and then they got married. So we went, we flew well, down. So effective uh, premarital counseling, maybe. <laughs> hey, we'll see. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> we'll see. So far, yeah, it's really, it's really good because we just, I just, we just listen and we help. We got some stuff that we take, some work that we take them through, but we just listen and see what the challenge is potentially could be or or are mm -hmm. and then just help them prepare for lifelong of relationship and working through that stuff 
or not working through them. Very cool, man. Well, that's that's an incredible service uh, to people to to help lay that foundation because uh, marriage, you know, that's one of the most important relationships we enter into. <laughs> Absolutely, and it it would test you at every point that you're vulnerable oh, in. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. If yep. you got a weak spot, God will use your spouse to test that to push <laughs> that button and to strengthen you in it. Yeah, and yeah. and if it's done right, there's no place to hide. You know, Absolutely. if marriage is done right, there's no place to hide. <laughs> Absolutely, you're right, naked and unashamed. There it is. Yeah, yeah. So Miami, that's that's a fun spot to zip off to. I'm a little jealous. I'm in Michigan and it's snowing. <laughs> Bro, it, yeah, it was. Miami's different. Typically, I I go to Miami, and I stay kind of on the outskirts, not up, not necessarily on the party scene or like the you know what what the superstars hang out in the stores. Yeah. But we couldn't help it this time. We were thrust into that community. Thrust is- into the superstars, huh? Oh, th- these were celebrities that that you were counseling and. Somewhat, yeah, yeah, they yeah, were, yeah. yeah, yeah. So, yeah. you know, celebrities can be relative, but it's funny, man, because at the wedding we saw, you know, it was some some of the people that we've seen and that we see consistently on TV or ah. you know, on the big screen. So you were hanging out with the big dogs, huh? That's funny, man. <laughs> what's funny? What's funny is there was one guy, you know, I greeted him like one of my friends, and he was like, "Yo, what's up?" <laughs> And my wife kept saying, like, him and a few other people looking at me like, don't we know him? How do we know him? <laughs> that's, that, that's that's where you want to be. You want to be hanging out with the big dogs and have them trying to figure out who you are. <laughs> <laughs> yep, yep. That's cool. That's cool. Yeah. So um, yeah, that's, you know, that's funny, though, when you meet or are in the orbit of a celebrity the the handful of times I've had the opportunity to do that, uh, they they seem a hundred percent across the board, um, so appreciative of just a genuine non starstruck relationship. You know, to, like you said, to meet somebody, greet them like they're your friend. Yeah, like and it's because it's the bigger the star, the harder it is for them to get that. Absolutely, and uh, you know. Yes, I just tried to act like I was with, you know, Aaron and and the um and the soapstone, you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, a cartoon celebrity. <laughs> yeah. Hey, celebrity, none the least, you know. Yeah, yeah. Nonetheless. Yeah, man. Well, that's cool. I'm glad you had that opportunity to both uh, go hang out with some stars and 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 experience that, but also, and more importantly. Uh, to be able to breathe into their marriage in such an important, important part of their lives. And, and you know, what's funny, man, is is that's why it's important for, there's this verse that <laughs> says, uh, let love be without hypocrisy. Or um, in other words, when you love someone, be authentic with that, with that person, with your love. Don't feel like you got to be, sh- uh, you know, you got to be, less than or bigger than you just be your true authentic self and man just being in that environment and just my wife and i being ourselves and seeing the impact that you know we were able to meet some new friends some folks who just and just talking uh there was one music artist that just overheard my wife and i talking to somebody else and then that artist came over was like let me ask y'all a question. <laughs> and then we just started, man, just in the way that only Jason and Terry Earls know to do, just <laughs> being ourselves laughing and talking about our stuff. And just, man, the life exchange or the pouring into and out of was just, and the conversation was just amazing. And I sat back and it's, again, we you and I always say this, who you are in real life is acting actually magnified in the metaverse. Oh. And uh, so just to be able to, I've had a lot of meaningful conversations lately in the metaverse and uh, probably more the, the meaningful conversations in real life and in the metaverse actually out 
the ones in the metaverse outweigh the ones in uh in real life wow wow that's that's amazing because if you look at time spent you know obviously the time in the metaverse is way less than the time spent uh irl you know yeah but uh but that's interesting to hear that the the genuine and impactful conversations that are happening in the in the metaverse are are more plentiful that's, that's right cool. and so it was just so it was good to be able to have so many of those conversations in the same day same you know uh same place uh in real life yeah it's pretty it was pretty cool well, I got to tell you, you know, I bumped into you in, in yeah. the soapstone earlier in the week, and that was that was awesome to uh, just connect with you, and and I know that there was one of those genuine conversations that you're talking about happened that night, right? Because um, uh, you know there was there was that man I won't name him, you know, but but uh, you and I ended up talking to a couple people, and I actually kind of called him out because we were talking about the rules of the club and he's somebody that I had butted heads with, yeah. uh, you know, a while ago. And, and, you know, he didn't like the rules and I didn't like that. He didn't like the rules. And, right. And, you know, we, we had a little tussle, uh, yeah. but then seeing him, you know, I'm, I'm, I used him as an example and I was like, Hey, like, like this guy, you know, he had a problem with the rules. We had uh, a problem and he's back and we've repaired that relationship and, and we're good. And, and then that, like you jumped right into that, <laughs> pick, pick up on that. Where, where'd that conversation go? Yeah. So, you know, I, w- one thing that's been happening that I've been thinking about in real life is there, there's this verse that talks about how we are, if, if you are a follower of Jesus, then you are in essence, one of his ambassadors. And the whole objective of an ambassador of who's a follower of Jesus actually to reconcile human beings. Reconcile human <laughs> beings. Yeah. Wow. So, so, and, and, it, and then it says, it says, this, we have the service of reconciliation. Mm. And it blows me away that if that's one of the traits of a supposedly Jesus following Christian person. Uh-huh. I always had like, where, where are they? Where's that trait? How come we don't <laughs> see that? And, and it happens a lot where we don't know. Uh, and only until we begin to discover, you know, backstories, but you don't see a lot of upfront stories about reconciliation or reconciling. Yeah. So when you told me that this guy got booted out, yeah. And he, you walking it, dude, he was being, he was, he was one of the, he was the party uh, jumpers. He, he was oh, keeping yeah. the party going in the soapstone. Yeah. So when yeah. you said that, I was like, you know, <laughs> I want to hear this reconciliation story. How is it that typically in the social media world where a lot of people are in our society seemingly be are, you know, socially weak. In other words, mm-hmm. we disagree. And then we just stop associating with a person. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, so I saw that and I, I just asked him, I said, uh, I forgot what question I asked him first. I remember it. What was it? I, I remember it uh, because I was like, Ooh, that, that cuts to the heart. You said, how has this experience in the metaverse changed your in real life relationships? Like, yeah. uh, I was like, ooh, ooh. <laughs> yeah, because there's, yeah, because a lot of times, one, I was, I was very inquisitive or curious about that, and 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 I was like, yo, let me, let's just ask him, and even if he yeah. he's not necessarily there, this will cause him to think about it. Yeah, and uh, because really, again, if you are a jerk in real life, you are a mm-hmm. real jerk in the metaverse. <laughs> yeah. And so he talked about how he realized just some realizations that he came, like when, when you booted him out, how he was talking about it. And he said, man, some people said, yeah, we can see how that, mm-hmm. that is. And he was like, man, maybe, maybe I'm wrong. And he came back. So then that's when I said, how has that, how has that affected your relationships in real life? 
Yeah, and yeah. he thought about it for a while, and then he then he started kind of regurgitating how he sees that simply showing up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was that was wild. That was such a good uh, conversation because uh, because yeah, I mean, I I, I kind of called him out, and I'm like, yeah, you know, we tussled a little bit, and and uh, you know, we reconciled, and he's like, yeah, um, I didn't know how my actions were affecting other people. He said, I didn't know how much I was getting under people's skin, you know, and he, and it's true. You know, he was in there just trying to have fun yeah. and just trying to do his thing. And he didn't realize that, Hey, these are all real people. And he was, yeah, absolutely. People. but man, yeah. that to, to, to say, man, I missed it. I missed the interaction. And I'm here to, to get back engaged. Like I, I bro. So- and, and what one, one thing about that, that I think that people need to understand or leaders need to understand and, and building an authentic relationship where your love has authenticity. Hmm. It's important that in authentic love, you don't hide some of the ugly stuff like the, the 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 way that you said yeah we bumped heads we didn't get you know it the, to me that set up the conversation or the question that i was able to ask him because yeah. you and 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 the dude that you are and being a great leader just without even thinking was authentic in saying yeah he and i bumped heads but yet he's here and it's, and you weren't, you weren't saying that to say, Oh, this guy was, a, we are, we had problems. Like, no, this, we love this guy. Right. right. And here's, here's an example of our love. Yeah. Yeah. But I mean, some of the, some of the most engaged um, people that, that just get it in there are people that we had problems with are people that came in and they were busting it up and, and, you know, causing trouble and we butt heads and then reconcile and then boom yes like i mean i hey it's great when you meet somebody and just everything clicks but like like this is a thing that i noticed in business like when we when i had like a vendor partner like things would be fine when they were going fine but where it really tested the metal where the relationship really got deep is when we ran into a problem when somebody screwed something up and now we got to disagree. Now we got to fight it out and then reconcile and then move forward. And after that, boom, that's where that relationship is strong. And just like a person will be weary till rested, I guess love will always be a theory till tested. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, that, that's William <laughs> Branch, a quote by him, the ambassador. Yeah. Ironically, uh, <laughs> yeah that that that's his that's his uh, hip hop name, the ambassador. All right, and it, but that, I just never that phrase just sticks out to me, man. Like we can say that we have love for a person, but just like a person will be tired until he he gets some rest, he or she gets some rest. Love will always be this concept or the of this or this theory until it's tested. Yep. Love has to be proven, man. It love is more right. of an action just than the theory or an idea. So, yeah, the, the couple that we just saw get married, they started off rocky, like yep. they didn't like each other at first. <laughs> from the fir- from the moment that they first met, you know, the the bride was her thing was why is he here? Why is he even in the car with us? <laughs> 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 and then the the, 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 the groom's like, man, why is she tripping? <laughs> why is she like this? <laughs> but yet, you know, it's somehow, you know, they they realize that, you know what, there's actually something about this person. And there's, there's a principle there. Just because a per, you clash with a person does not mean that that relationship needs to end. Just because you have a disagreement does not mean that you need to bring it into this relationship. In fact, that could be an indication that that person has 
a great balance to bring you a great um, worth or value to add to your life. You know, this is a, this is kind of a risky concept to pivot to, but there's the question that's asked over and over, you know, why do bad things happen to good people? Mm. If there's a God who loves us, why are there bad things that happen? That's a good question. And maybe the heart of it comes from this whole dynamic that we're talking about. Mm. Maybe our relationship with God is deeper, is more genuine, is more fulfilling in the times of hardship uh, than it can even be without those times of hardship. Absolutely. And I think, uh, and, and that is that is a legitimate and almost necessary question to ask sometimes. Why do yeah. good things happen? Bad things happen well, to good people. I don't know. Yeah. That's a good question. Too. Why do good <laughs> things happen to bad people? Some people are like, yeah, that's why are they right. succeeding? Well, I'm doing everything I can. <laughs> that's <laughs> right. That's, that's just as important of a question. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. But I think, you know, sometimes we ask, I, I love questions because it, it's, what makes us ask certain things, you know, and sometimes it could be the, that question can be asked sometimes as an, forgive me for using this word for the person who, who's asked this question, who's asking this question, but sometimes it can be used. Here's that word as an excuse not to engage. Mm -hmm. Yeah. In other words, I'm so, I hate this, that this thing happened so much. The person who allowed this to happen, be it God, you know what? I don't want anything to do with them. I'm going to, instead of really trying to ask and dive into that question and trying to understand it with the real, genuine, and pure heart, I'm just going to ask that question with the attitude to say, I can't stand him. Yeah. Yeah. Because ultimately, again, like there are some things that make that he may allow that you felt like he could have stopped. But it could be oftentimes that. And and his sovereignty, meaning, you know, he does what he does and he's on a whole different pay grade than I am. Sometimes his ways can't be totally understood, but sometimes like this old lady who saw a cat, a butterfly breaking out of the cocoon and she just, it, it killed her to see this butterfly struggling, mm. just wiggling for its dear life to break out a cocoon. Mm. So what she decided to do was help the butterfly to eliminate the difficulty and peeled off the cocoon but she didn't know her compassion mm. wasn't supposed to substitute her understanding mm. those are two different things she was very compassionate but lacked understanding mm -hmm. she didn't understand that God had designed the cocoon so that the butterfly in working its way out and struggling through the cocoon to get mm -hmm. out of the cocoon worked out every single muscle that enabled the butterfly to fly. Yeah. So by the time she pulled off the cocoon completely, the butterfly couldn't fly because those muscles weren't worked out and the butterfly died. Yeah. So oftentimes the difficult times and the bad things work some muscles yeah. in us. And, you know, and that's... I mean, this is this is why this is such a dangerous uh, line of conversation to get into. Yeah, because you know, there's uh, the people that fall into that category that you mentioned that um, that aren't asking why do bad things happen to good people, but are saying I'm not going to love God because bad things happen to good people. Yeah, the, you know, the, the people that fall into that category a thing that's a hundred percent consistent across the board is they have pain. Absolutely. And they have experienced horrendous things Yeah, to turn them to that position. And, you know, while there's such truth, such beautiful, simplistic truth in that, in that analogy, 
of the butterfly and and needing to go through those things you know it, it's so dangerous because the people that have experienced it like aren't, aren't trying to hear that <laughs> absolutely and what's tough about having this conversation you and i is the person listening to this conversation got all these rebuttals like in my mind as i was yeah. telling the butterfly story yeah. i had a bunch of but what but 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 this right right what about the person who was a kid and didn't have a choice of these yeah. poor choices these adults made right and the ch the child became victim to the st stupidity or the perverse the perverseness of an adult right. like that right that's a big question i have like okay yeah. if god is so good yeah why does that kid get molested mm. if god is so oh. good yeah. why is this sex traffic going on why, if god is so good why is it that for 200 plus years my people were enslaved like if god is so right. good right. Like, i got talk about questions i got a <laughs> right. lot of I got a lot of questions. <laughs> I got a lot of them. Yeah. That the butterfly the, that that butterfly analogy, just like ah, I don't think God designed like okay, I get the cocoon, but yeah, but slavery or yeah. sex slaves like that. Yeah, you mean tell me God designed like no, 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 no. God did not design that. Right. Somehow that's why I use that word sovereign, which is a dangerous word when people don't understand it. But it's like. For some reason, God God did not want humans to be robots. Right. So he allows us to have free choices and uh, make our own choices to prove that love will be a theory until mm -hmm. tested. <laughs> right. Yeah. And in the process, like he made humans with this this ability to make their own choices that affects other humans. But the but the thing is, we look at these poor choices that human makes and how it affects us horribly. Yeah. And then we ask that question, well, why does God allow these bad things to happen to good people? Again, great question, but don't stop there. Mm -hmm. It's like, okay, how, how does God being the greatest com comeback or underdog uh, story writer of mm -hmm. all times, how does he allow a, another human who's a victim of a horrible human's free choice, mm -hmm. how does God give grace and mercy and a comeback story for you to uh, the beauty for ashes is what we call it. Mm -hmm. You know, how does he, what does the beauty for ashes look like in, in coming back from that? You know, you look at you know, let's look at what's the horrible idea of slavery and just everything that came out of that, the Jim Crow stuff. And I mean, I, we don't need to give here. This is the metaverse. Well, metaverse mm -hmm. is not a history, but, but you look at all the difficult things that come from a few human beings making a bad decision. But there's also some beauty for, of it. You know, I'm on a podcast with a white dude mm -hmm. that, you know, if not, I probably would have been you know, still in, I don't know what, what village, uh, in, in West Africa that I would have been in, you know, where my granddad's people are from. <sighs> this gets so deep, it, but, it does, man. yeah, but it's, you know, but look at, we consistently see, like, if you really read the Bible with that idea, you would see there's consistently this, God, for whatever reason that I may view as stupid sometimes, allows this tough stuff to happen, but yet in the midst of it, you see this, the underdog overcoming story all consistently. You look at this little country or this little group of people, uh, well, let, let's say like six people, you know, in, in one boat. And everybody else got taken out, but yet humanity uh, remains. You look at one little dude who was the youngest of his brothers. And when they went to choose the new president or king of the country from this family, they looked at everybody except for the youngest brother. You know, the underdog. Right. 
And then he became, he, they're like, well, this is the one actually. But then when he came to fight, you know, to fight, like all the men didn't want to fight this big, you know, humongous dude named Goliath. But yet, here's another underdog story. You look at, you look, look at the Titanic, even in movies. It's like, it wasn't the Titanic to say, it was the underdog, the little boats that saved the people. <laughs> you look at, you know, uh, how come that uh, Gilligan's Island wasn't named Skipper's Island? It's Gilligan, because he was the mm. <laughs> the, the yeah. least intelligent of yeah. them all. You look at the story yeah. actually of Jesus, like, yo, you know what? I'm I'm gonna let y'all kill me, and uh, right, let's right. see what happens after that. Yeah. It's like, like, oh, right. It's like God just consistently looks at the little person, and say, all right, now let's watch watch my right. hand on this. Right. All all those stories you just referenced, except for maybe the Titanic one, <laughs> right. all those stories that you just referenced, you know, it, it reminds me of like when I read the Bible, what, what I hear over and over and over in every story from start to finish, uh, every historical account, every, every uh, parable, every, everything that's in the Bible, what I hear over and over is God is bigger than what those people are dealing with. Absolutely. And I, including death. Yes. Including everything. And that's that's the key. You know, when we talk about these horrendous things, you know, the sex trafficking, molestation, slavery, these things, the people who have experienced those things, that might be the biggest thing possible. There is nothing bigger than what happened to them. But then yeah. we've got this God that doesn't say, I made that happen to you. Right. But it says, even though that happened, I'm bigger than that. Absolutely. You know, it's... it's. And what I love, you use one very good phrase that I love, historical accounts. Yeah. Like this stuff is, it's like this stuff isn't made up. Well, Gilligan was, you know, <laughs> uh, but man, when you go like going over to Israel, taking the tour, like, oh, crap, this stuff, even before then, like reading some not not Christian writers, but like straight up historians who weren't Christians mm-hmm. and some are like like this dude named Josephus and the stuff that he would write just being a historian recording this stuff. And seeing like, oh, this stuff is pretty, it's pretty, pretty consistent. Even like, let's, I love having slavery conversations because uh, typically people have their two trains of thought. Some people, sometimes people like, uh, in one school of thought, like slavery wasn't that bad. Plus it was just a hundred years ago, uh, 200 years ago. Uh, and I don't think they would treat that bad, but here's, and, one thing I always say to that, do you know you can literally listen to slaves? Like, have you ever read any testimonies of slaves? Even there are some audio uh, interviews of real life slaves. Wow. Um, yeah, you can go on YouTube and uh, just interview the free, free slaves because most people think slavery was super long ago. It was my great grandparents were living when slavery ended. Mm-hmm. So it's like, so like, don't just, again, this is not a history lesson. This is a, <laughs> the idea is if you, if you have such this crazy, I can't stand God because it, this negative stuff happens. Listen to other people who've had some horrible negative things happen to them. Mm. Listen to these testimonies from people who were in slavery. So insightful. Even though my kids don't like one of my one of my kids like <laughs> if I if I'm reading some stories like if there's a story about a slave at uh, and I'm doing that at night they're like oh, I'm scared to go to bed now like girl nobody's coming to get you tonight. <laughs> and go, and go put you in captivity. <laughs> Calm yourself down. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So yeah, man. But uh, man, and that's that's a great, great question. 
I always end it with this, not end it, but another thing you got to ask is if God is like really righteous and holy like like he say he is and he doesn't like evil, how come things aren't worse than what they are? Uh, yeah, that's... Yeah. <laughs> it's like, yo, like, <laughs> if he really hates this wrongdoing and there's so yeah. many wrongdoing. How come he just ain't destroyed the world right now? Like, or last week? Yeah. <laughs> How yeah. come I didn't die last night when I, after I was about to, right before I went to sleep, I just killed off this uh, cran, cran apple drink. Like, that was unhealthy and probably not good for my body. How come he just didn't kill me off in my sleep? <laughs> really? That's... Yeah. We Man, gotta we're, ask we're, ourselves those we're, questions. We're hitting all the biggies here. I mean, we, <laughs> we're talking religion, you know, right. and, and cranium. Right. Right. Who's the former president? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Right. Let's, let's get some politics. Yeah. Going. What do you think about CRT, man? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Should marijuana be legalized? Right. <laughs> right. Right. Yeah. yeah, man, that's, uh, and you know what? That's what I love about this. Like, that is what I love about connecting with you just to talk through. Like, I mean, there's a lot happening today in the metaverse. There, this has been a, a wild week with a, with a ton going on. And frankly, that's what I thought we were going to talk about. But this mm. is more important. The stuff that we're unscripted getting into and just sharing perspectives and trying to understand uh, each other's and trying to, to share genuine with people. Yeah. It's far more important than mm. the stats of what's happening. It's far more important than the drama of what might be happening in the metaverse. It's far more important than the strategies on how we're trying to overcome that. This is where it's at. Like yeah. this, like getting into the the nitty gritty, like the meat of it, the questions that make us go, man, why am I here? And what? why doesn't any of this make sense? You know? Right. And, and, and that's why... Sometimes, although the stats, the data stuff is very important, especially when you look at building a company, building an organization, building a, a world in the metaverse, uh, you don't want to ignore uh, those questions. So for those who maybe, you know, have had those questions or tried to bury those questions or may try to use sometimes the metaverse as a distraction from that stuff. Mm -hmm. Like, yo, don't be afraid to, uh, to explore those questions uh, in, in, in a genuine way, especially with somebody like I'm welcome to, Hey, we, I can show up at Soapstone. We can sit by the yeah. fire, yeah. take a walk <laughs> and, mm -hmm. uh, and have some conversations about these things. It's, but, I mean, but the I'm, flip I'm, side of that too, the flip side of that too is, um, you know, especially as men of faith or people of faith, um, or, or for that matter, anybody who is wholeheartedly enthusiastic about a perspective. Um, we got to be careful that uh, we're not manufacturing or fabricating the opportunities to persuade people. Abs absolutely. <laughs> like, yeah, I'm just, and again, I'm just like, yo, I'm talking about for the health of people. Cause when you got, when you got some of those questions, it's and those questions aren't aren't explored in a healthy way. Mm -hmm. You begin to respond to people in a way that it gets you booted out. <laughs> a report. Right. It's just yeah. like, yo, why why are you so obnoxious, bro? Yeah. Or why are you so anxious? Why are you so easily offended and at any waking moment want to kick somebody out? Like why? Like where's well, that coming from? And here's here's something, okay? Some of these questions you cannot answer without faith. And people associated with faith have hurt a lot of people. Oh, come on, bro. <laughs> and and so many different ways. Yeah. Whether yeah. it's being on TV, say, hey man, if you got a prayer request, send it on a, write it on the back of a blank check. <laughs> that's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. You know, I mean people associated with faith have hurt a lot of people. So the people that fall into that category, they're caught in this trap that they don't trust people of faith. Absolutely. I get but it. But yet the only answers lie within faith, you know, mm. man, 
I, I didn't think we could get deeper, but boom. bro. <laughs> yet here we are. <laughs> yet here we are. <laughs> yeah, such a such a perplex, you know, complex. A, such a complex perplexity that we find ourselves in. That's right. You know, poetic. <laughs> That's yeah. why it's good to tell some jokes in the soapstone. That's, that's why. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> that's right. Yeah, and if yeah, if you're not in a spot to sort all that out, just come tell some jokes. Yeah, just come tell, <laughs> you know, in fact, you know, I would prefer that anyway. Yeah, that's, that's right. That's right. <laughs> like we could go deep if we want to, but if we have to, but la, yeah. let's, uh, you know, let's 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 keep the jokes rolling. Yeah, that's right. That, I mean, it, it is like, and and again, that's that is a that's a unique thing about comedians um I, I won't even just say of faith but comedians that have uh um strong strong ph philosophical opinions on things i'm, I'm yeah. going to say that because it, it goes further than just comedians of faith but comedians that have strong philosophical opinions on stuff um there's this ability to get deep and dive deep on stuff that we're passionate about and then laugh bro and, oh you know what a comedian man i was hoping that my career got to a certain place so i could be able to hang out and talk and i call it philosophizing <laughs> uh with this person and that's george carlin man oh i just dude's got some different he got completely different views than i do on some in some areas and then in the summer, like, dude, I thought I was the only one that thought about that. <laughs> yeah, right, right. Yeah, and, I mean, what would you give for, uh, you know, to sit dude, down and just and just have genuine conversation with with him? Like, yeah, because some of his comedy to me is very thought provoking, man. Absolutely. And Absolutely. Uh, you know, again, I'm always in this weird space where I'm writing some minutes, and then some moments I'm I'm deep, you know. Think about, man, how would Socrates answer this one? You know, mm -hmm. just so having a dude like George Carlin just to kick it with would be fantastic. That's why right. I read some of his stuff. In fact, you know, he did the five words you can't tell on television, say on television. And I did a comedy special called Seven Jokes You Couldn't Tell at Church. That's right. That's right. Seven yeah. jokes I couldn't tell at church. Yeah. Yep. That's yeah. I I didn't see that parallel there uh, until until you pointed it out. But yeah, yeah, and, and that wasn't purposeful. It was just these are seven jokes I want to tell, and when I perform at churches, I can't tell these jokes, but I'm gonna tell them, right. and I don't want anybody to feel like, man, I'm gonna hurt my career, and this might be trying to go another level of deep, you yeah. know, another level of depth. But I was just like, no, I'm going to tell them. It doesn't change who I am. It's just you have a perspective that a person probably shouldn't say these things. And I'm going to say them. You're right. We dialed yeah. it up again. like, Because, <laughs> man, to not. And, and this is like one of the big things that I hear in the Soapstone is. How are you going to be able to tell, how, how are you going to call this a comedy club? How are you going to have people telling jokes in here and not allow uh, cuss words, not allow this, that, or the other thing, you know, and yeah. you know, you can do it. Yeah, you can, you can do it. You know, there's, there's a, a way, but all of it, all of the comedy, it, in order for it to be comedy, there has to be a certain level of discomfort yeah. and there has to be a certain level of, of surprise, you know? So, so the, the, the jokes that you can't tell in, in church, you know, there, there, it, you need to have that, you know, it's, <laughs> oh man. This, and, but you also need to know your audience. Yeah. Right. Right. Had I not known how to do clean comedy, I probably wouldn't be able to do the seven jokes I couldn't tell at church well. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so there, there are places that I, and there are places that I go that the seven jokes I couldn't tell at church aren't appropriate. Yeah. Yeah. 
like church. <laughs> it, does, it doesn't mean, well, it all depends on what church yeah, it is. Right, yeah, you yeah. know, uh, but it doesn't mean that 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 stuff is wrong or that the people who don't want that in that environment are wrong or off or right. immature. Right. It just means like there's this certain context yeah. that's set here. And in this context, we don't want to hear anything about even though the Bible might say the Bible might have a verse in there that says, you know, always be exhilarated by the wife of your youth, you know, uh, let her breast satisfy you at all times. That's, that's a legit Bible verse. Yeah. But that's not for, that might not be the Bible verse to exegete or to really uh, dissect when there are a bunch of kids in the room. Right. Right. Like, like no. uh, what does this enjoyment look like, everybody? What is, <laughs> right, right. To, like, now, yo, what are they really trying to say here? Right, you know, right you know. here. Let me illustrate <laughs> this, yeah. please. Boobs like, are good. That's the big <laughs> takeaway. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's, not, that's not for a family environment. <laughs> yeah, right. And right. if I'm hired to do a family show, yeah. I can't get mad. Like, I'm going to tell the joke anyway. No, that's not right. being professional. Yep. Yeah. But I do want my adults when I do these family shows, no, like yo, yeah, there is some conversation that I have, yeah, yeah, that not for your kids. Come yeah. here, that's right. Order this. Look at go to my website, jasonrose.com forward slash seven jokes, and you can see some of these jokes. People and and that and then what I've learned, adults appreciate that. Like oh, yeah, he's got. Okay, he can he can talk finances, but he can also talk basketball. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's like when 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 you if there's a person that you talk to and all they know is sports, that becomes a little. I don't enjoy that person. Then I do the person who can talk to me about sports and leadership. Right, right. Sports and business, sports yeah. and finances. Like, give me yeah. that person. When if you tell me. That you you are in in management, upper management, middle management of a Fortune 500 company, but like I don't want to talk about that, man. Let's talk about let's talk about this Final Four tournament. I'm like, yo, yeah, <laughs> like yeah. Let's talk. Let's, I don't even need to know. Like we can talk business business leadership some other time. Like yeah. let's just let's just talk about basketball now. Right. Right. Thank you. Yeah. So if you if if somebody knows and hey this dude has some mature stuff, but he also you can bring your kids to this particular show, and yeah. we all gonna enjoy it. Yep. Yeah. That's uh, and, and it's good to know the difference, and it's good to be able to um, describe that as people are uh, considering you for a uh, for a position or for a show. You know, it's good to be able to I don't quantify know. that and describe it. Yeah, I, but I think that's a lot of explaining, and I don't yeah. think most people look for that explanation, which is sad. Which is why I was hesitant to do the seven jokes, yeah. because it's most people hear this joke like, "Oh, we can't bring them in because yeah. this is going to be a family show," and I'm like, yeah. uh, "Give me a little bit more credit than that." Yeah, <laughs> I had a. I think I may have said this before. I had a meeting. Because I had this major event and I had to have a meeting. They want to know, was I going to tell certain jokes? I'm like, really, guys? <laughs> I appreciate you asking because you have to have, you know, if you're in charge, you got there's certain things you got to know, but just know you can trust me. I got sense yeah. enough not to do yeah. those jokes. Yeah. A professional. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, there was a, um, one of the churches in West Michigan that, uh, uh, that I, that I have done some comedy shows with, um, there was a, there was a convention of pastors and they hired a local MC to come in and do comedy. Uh Oh yeah. Uh, <laughs> he walked literally the entire room of pastors and with good cause. Like, I mean, and and this was better than a decade ago. And I mean, I've heard about this situation multiple times. It's still a ghost. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. They're like, I mean, there's, there's one church that literally I have a good relationship with and they're like, no, we won't, we won't bring a comedian in. And it's because of that event. 
Wow. And it's like, yeah, yeah. And it's it's wild. Yeah. Can you can I'm I'm very curious now. Can you on record or even off record like say what that stuff is? Because now I'm like, what did he say? What did he do? Uh well is it appropriate so, for this context? No, no, it's it's inappropriate for this context. Okay. I mean, there was like so I mean you've had this feeling now before everybody. where you get on stage and you start bombing. Yeah. And like sometimes what a little bit of panic will set in. Right. And sometimes if that panic sets in, people will just dial the knob, just spin the knob to ten. Yeah. And that's what happened. Like this guy got up and started making some uh inappropriate jokes and huh. and people didn't respond well and yeah. he panic set in and he spun the knob and it went to stuff that would probably walk Dave Chappelle. <laughs> you know, I mean it like he went he went bad with it. it, it like wow. he, like everybody needed to watch. Actually, I don't know how he got to finish. I don't know who the last person out was, you know. But but maybe the second to the last person should wow. have said, "Hey, you know what? You got to get off stage," you know. But uh, <laughs> okay, here's the question: You putting on an event, and that happens with the with the guy that you got on stage. What are you doing? Well, oh, if it's me. No, not if you're, oh. you're telling the jokes, but no, you're no, in no. charge of this event. And the person that you brought in is on stage doing that. He's spinning the bottle, bro. Well, again, but, the church that I've worked with, the pastor uh-huh. of that church is the guy that brought him in. So, like, <laughs> I mean, like, he's the guy that said, ooh, I know this guy. Let's bring him in. So, like. But I mean, to his credit, like he's he's hired clean comedy time to come in and yeah. and do shows, you know. Uh, so I mean, that's that's commitment to comedy right there. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Like, yeah, absolutely. Well, but that but yeah. that's great. There, there's a. I, I forgot who said this, but creating an environment where you can fall forward. Oh yeah, that's. That's probably one of the most for me growing up in a in a in an environment where everybody felt like they had to put on this facade of perfection and having it all together. And that's what we strive for. So we don't fail. Even when we do fail, we don't admit it. Yeah. Uh but man, having a culture where like, yeah, well, that was the wrong guy to choose. <laughs> We blew that one. Yeah. Hopefully, we get it right next year. Yeah, That's like, like how can we avoid that? Like, yeah. why, you know, why? How did that one fall through the cracks? Yeah. So, yeah, man, I, I think that is just phenomenal that you can be a good, good sport, have everything in perspective. Yeah, yeah, I, I think that's that's huge, and and he's someone who, who genuinely appreciates uh, the communication style of comedy and how powerful it is. Yeah. Uh, so you know that's that's cool to to get a black eye like he did to get beat up bad make a terrible decision that that blows up in front of all your colleagues and friends i mean this was a convention of right. pastors all his colleagues and and a decade later people are still talking about it like that's you know you, you messed that one up <laughs> Dude, i would love to interview him yeah, um, I I could probably make that happen. Like on your on your podcast, are yes. you talking about? Yeah. Yes, I would love. Yeah, love. I, I can set that up. I can Please set that do. Up. Okay. okay, that would be yeah. And then everybody who who because I know some people like. So what did he say? Yeah, right. You can ask him. You can <laughs> ask him. <laughs> you can come to my podcast. And listen That's to right. That's right. But this is where you plug your podcast. Yeah, by the way. yeah. You go. Jason Rose jokes aside. There it is. There it well, is. Wisdom and insights, the main course, and jokes are just a side dish. Let's go. Yeah. What? What? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's when the beat drops too. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, is it cool? Cool. Cool. Yeah. So, man. Um. Yeah. I'll I'll set that up. Uh. Uh. Cause and he'd love to do it. Uh, he'd love. That to do is it. great. Okay, cool. dude. So, I know. Like, so how has Soapstone been? What's the growth? We hit. 50,000 viewers. I mean, visitors. Yeah. Like, what's the latest, greatest? So, yeah, I mean, things are things are happening. It's, uh, I'm just going to pull up my data here. Uh, so, a- as of this week, we've had a total of 53,200 visitors. 
So that's up from 50,000 uh, last week. So a 3,000 person increase. Uh, yeah. And the last uh, the last full week of data that we have is about 9,500 weekly visitors. So that's down slightly from okay. what it was. It was 10,000. So that's down just a little bit. But now, to be honest, looking at this past week, um, I think next week when I report on that, it's uh-huh. going to be down uh, quite a bit more. There was uh, there was some stuff that hit the fan this week, and really? it was yeah it it's been there there has been a lot of drama uh, in there, and um, I've taken action to correct it, and I think I've identified the root cause of it. And the, the, the root cause, honestly, it comes back to something you and I talked about early on in the podcast when we started bringing people in that, you know, we're putting people in these in this position of tech and, you know, w- without really them being ready or equipped for it. Yeah. <clears throat> so we've got, we've got this situation where we're asking people to be judge, jury, and executioner. Right. And when that happens, the people that are judged, juried, and executed don't like it very much. Yeah. So there's been this kind of battle back and forth, and it's an unhealthy drama-driven culture. Right. Um, and and I've been struggling this past week especially, but, but I mean, it's come up a little bit before this uh, on, on what to do. And, and part of it, you know, like, um, and I think we've got the solution, but like I rolled out the solution, uh, yesterday and today all day long in the metaverse, I've got meetings with people, uh, rooms full of of people to come in and say, Hey, you know, this is what we're doing. This is why we're doing it. And not everybody's taking it well, you know, the, the, the solution to the drama is actually creating quite a bit of drama. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. But I mean, and the, like the, the technical piece of it is we've had this position called text and the techs have been responsible for policing the room with a tool called the clipboard, which they can remove people. Yeah. Um, and, and what we've done is eliminated that position of techs and kind of split it into two positions. Uh, one is called a producer, yeah. which is up in the producer booth, formerly the tech booth that helps produce shows. They're doing the sound effects. They're, they're uh, controlling the boundaries. They're, they're doing some things like that. And then the policing role, um, that's, you might recognize this name. That's uh, certified soapstone leaders that are in the community okay. that can just, you know, they, they don't have the clipboard. They have the tools that everybody has yeah. the ability to report somebody to horizon if they're breaking the rules mm. the ability to start a poll to have somebody removed instead of just clicking a button and booting them right you know so um it it's a i won't get into all the dynamics of that but that's the gist of it you know splitting it to to bring that burden to relieve that the people that are so important relieve them of that burden of having to be judge, jury, and executioner. You've, you've taken away the power. We, and some, and some people don't like being stripped of the power. Uh, people don't like change, <laughs> and especially they don't like change if it's taking power away from them. Yeah, I mean, we've we've flat out lost some people. There, there's some people that say, you know, you, you just ruined the soapstone. You know, yeah. th- this is the only reason I liked being here. It's it's been hard. It's been hard, you know. You, um, you sound like a either a leader of a business, like a a public company that wants to. Now they're gonna try to vote you out because you <laughs> you jack with the stock options, or you sound like a pastor, bro. <laughs> it's, you know, it, it, it's not all that different. Yeah, <laughs> you know? not at all. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's 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 wild, you know. Because I mean, this is this is important to people. Like these the what's happening in the soapstone. This is people's social circle. This is people's social standing. And suddenly I come in and for quite, quite literally hundreds of people yank that away. It's a big deal. And I didn't do it lightly, right? you know, I, and, and I didn't do it for anybody's best interest other than the people who had it, (laughs) Yeah, you know, 
So good. Dude, man, as I I hope as people like watch this journey, if they they do what I'm doing, and that's really observing just what it looks like to be a leader that has the organization, the organizations, let's just call it Soapstone organization. What do we call it? The entity. I guess that's the best way to Yeah, there you go. That's that works. I, yeah. I'll think about that a little bit. I know, I know you don't, man, but it's <laughs> like somehow we gotta come up with a word. Yeah. So that when we put it in conversations like in, right, right. in conversational context like this, it makes sense. So yeah. like watching you look at the best interest of the entity or organization while you at the same time think of what's best for the people as well and oftentimes that can be a um well that's that's difficult sometimes especially when the people are starting to buck up against the decision of what's best for the entity yeah 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 it it is i mean it's it's difficult and it's there's a lot of second guessing involved because because again like nobody knows what's how what's the right way to handle this you know there is no book it's a whole new thing and so i'm guessing all the way through it and now i'm 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 guessing with input from people i'm talking to people i'm seeking wise counsel but ultimately it comes down to a to a question like do i do this or do i do that and the you know, nobody knows. <laughs> right. And, and, that, but and that's, it's not, I'm sorry, and that's not do? different. Yeah, that's not different than anything else. You know, right. that's that's the same. I guess if I think about, you know, days of being a marketing manager, there's no there's a billion books on marketing. But whatever right. the specific challenge is, there's no there's no uh, textbook on this is what you do. Otherwise, it'd be easy. You, know. you being a Michigan man will appreciate this. Uh, and y'all, uh, let me just preface it with just don't shoot me. Just go with the principle for him. <laughs> I did not know that a lot of times when Brett Falf was playing for Green Bay, that he was just, on a lot of those amazing plays, he was just throwing the ball hoping that something happened. You didn't recognize that until he went to Minnesota and it didn't work out. You're like, what? You're like, yeah, I've, been, I've been doing this the whole time. <laughs> you like, whoa. <laughs> so everybody, co- quarterbacks do that. Coaches yep. do it, calling the fourth and, you know, going for it on fourth and one or yep. let's not kick the field goal. Uh, yep. You know, can you, I mean, I think, you know, even in the Bible, they did that. I'm pretty sure Noah was like, "Ooh, that worked out." Yeah, David too. After after after, yeah. you know, Goliath fell. He's like, "Man, yeah. <laughs> it worked." This yeah, time. yeah. That I mean, that's boy. I I like that analogy. Just kind of throw the ball down the field and and hope that you got enough talented people around uh, to make something ha- happen. And like his goal in that is not that a hundred percent of the passes be caught, and uh, um, you know it's not a hundred percent success. Right. The goal of of Brett Favre is you know hey we need to have enough completed passes to win, you know, but, the, but there's going to be dropped passes and that's okay. Yeah. That's <laughs> you know? so good, dude. And and that helps with the flip side too. Like I can say that, you know what? We put too much on this position of tech. Mm. And in doing that, we've tainted the whole position of tech, you know, and that's yeah. on me that, you know, it, but that's okay. It's okay that uh, that um, the idea that we dreamt up didn't really work, <laughs> right? And there were problems with it. But we're gonna throw another pass and make yes, some sir. stuff happen. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, well, hey, I got an interception. Watch this next series, though. <laughs> there it is. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah.
Thanks for joining us on this adventure. We will be back next week with a brand new episode, and you can always find us at jasonearls.com, theunemployedalcoholic.com, or at the Soapstone Comedy Club in Horizon Worlds. 